Hi everyone, welcome to day 12 of Endgame Training with Sagar. Well, we, we were planning to keep a 9 day session and today we have already the third day, additional third day. Um, but there's so much to learn in Endgames as you all are getting to know from what we are doing in the previous days. And so today is going to be all about some very interesting practical rook end games and if we are able to complete that then i also would like to share something about pawn end games uh, let's see how much we are able to do and i would like to uh, welcome all of you over here a few names that i can see jayant saha divya p ashika kale ashley ram jatan uh, only sports and cubing rushila rishila banerji tripti gadge arun dikshit anushka bhat sujata shastri rutik nemane so many of you uh, here it's uh, wonderful to know and today is going to be the start of online nations cup which is a tremendous tournament to look forward to i'll be also talking about it in a bit well, Kunal Singh says, due to workload, I was not able to see you live, but always seeing your class afterwards. Seeing, seeing your classes have really affect my way of playing and analyzing. Can't explain how much I respect you. Thank you so much, Kunal. This is wonderful to know. Ashika Kale says, is this your son with you in the thumbnail? Not yet. This is my nephew. And uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you a bit about that in a bit. <clears throat> Shashank Aswat says, my office are on right now, but since I don't have any students visiting right now, I'm tuning in here and becoming a student myself. Does Sagar approve of this teaching method? Well, in general, if no student comes, then of course you should, you should make good use of your time. But uh, once the student joins in, it would be nice if you can focus on him entirely. <clears throat> Although I know you would. Okay, so good morning to all of you. Ilam Parthi, Honi Arora, and uh, Swayam Ubale, Kira, Kimaya Virle. Welcome everyone. Uh, let's let's get on to some tactics straight on because I think today is going to be a lot of things that we have to cover. So let's go to account.chessbase.com shall we okay so here we are account.chessbase.com uh, and let's go to training reshma dave says you have taken my interview i've come to your ghatkopar office really what's your name i don't remember reshma dave ah, i need to log in Okay. Shri Devi says the boy in the thumbnail is so cute. Yes, that's true. Okay. So let's begin. First one for the day white to move. Well, it doesn't look too tough. Yeah, does it? Nice one. Nice tactic. Krishna Gelra, can you make a video on how to master notation quickly? Okay. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll think about this and try to make one. Although I've suggested a few techniques in my previous videos on how you can get better. Uh -huh. So you are, you are, yeah, of course, your, your student is also remote, so you can't do much. But you can keep my video on with the position, Shashank, and try to see, solve it a bit when you have given something to solve for the student. Yeah, Ilam Parthi says, uh, but Ilam Parthi, uh, do you think... This is the right move order because maybe black has a defense there. 
even Swayam Das says the same move. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe that's the right move because I was looking at Bishop G7, Bishop G7, Rook G3, and then if Bishop F6, you have Queen G8, Rook G8, Knight F7. Uh, however, after Bishop G7, Bishop G7, Rook G3, you have Bishop into E5. But after D E5, I don't know how. Uh, yeah, maybe he can go Rook G8. Now there is no Knight F7. That's the point. So therefore, first Rook G3, and if he goes G6, you can win an exchange. Although just an exchange doesn't look so great, but I think it's it's the best you can do, right? Uh, the right move has been suggested by Suma AS Atreya. By the way, uh, Mini Chess Base India is Atreya, and Atreya, I must congratulate you for playing some amazing games. You sent me a database of your games. I checked it yesterday, and there were some beautiful games. In fact, one of the games, I I guess I can I can show a couple of them. I was tremendously impressed. Uh, can you can you tell me how old are you Atreya? Uh, that would be nice to know. Yeah, Bishop G7 is what Sumed is suggesting and also Shriyana. But Bishop G7, Bishop G7, Rook G3, Bishop E5. We have to consider D E5 and Rook G8. Perhaps that does not win the game. So let's go with Rook G3 first. Hi to Sarvanan and... Nandan, good to see you guys. Rook g3, g8, 6, and now comes the stunning move, queen g8, and you take and a mate. <clears throat> uh, g6 is what I think he should play. And here, um, I guess taking would be fine, but also you can wait. Take, take, and. Um, yeah, I was thinking rook f3 may be possible. Okay, next position. This one is white to move. Interesting. But looks looks simple. Looks simple. But we need to calculate the lines. It's always important. Atreya is 12, okay, 12 years old and plays some really good chess. In fact, his game with Ilam Parthi was also very interesting. Maybe I can show some of his interesting games. Shashank says, good to hear he isn't your son. You are too young for that still. Also makes us single folks look less conscious at 30. Well, as always, there are upsides and downsides to everything. So, I guess being single is not so bad. Uh, yeah, B5 is rightly pointed out by Sairam Sampat, Shanks, Sani Deshpande, Divya B, H, Subhash, Daksh Goyal. And some of you are mentioning Rook G5. That's Arun Dikshit. Good to see you, Arun. Anup Datta, uh, Abdul Kalam, Dev Marcia. All of you have suggested Rook G5. Okay. So what's wrong with B5 then? Well, you need to look carefully. You know, this is why I do tactics in the morning. Because if I didn't do it in the morning, you all would be half asleep. But because I do it, uh, then it becomes like, oh my god, b5, bishop a5, suddenly. So that's the point. b5, bishop a5 is coming uh, and the queen is pinned. So bishop a, b5, bishop a5, queen is pinned. So, first move suggested by everyone is rook to g5. Now, there are two ways to defend the mate here. g6 and f6. 
g6 doesn't look so good because of bishop b2 there is a lot of pressure down this uh, down this diagonal so you go f6 and now to f6 you start to think what to do um it could be possible to play a uh, bishop b2 but then there is bishop e5 rook e5 d f e5 queen e5 yeah i'm looking at okay bishop b2 is also possible first move but rook g5 f6 somehow rook g5 f6 is not very clear to me like rook g7 king g7 i don't think that works because bishop e5 is coming uh and if ah queen f6 right i need to wake up yeah so rook g5 f6 queen f6 is just winning and g6 bishop b2 is winning so yeah rook g5 that's it's a strong but queen e5 now i can just take with the queen right f6 queen f6 yeah okay let's go to the next one good job guys you guys yeah it's a pin it's a pin okay let's look at this one what should why do in this position f5 was a typical move to open up this bishop on the f7 square Aha, Ilam Parthi says it's a game of Botwinik. I didn't know that. Very good, very good, guys. You are so strong. Sairam Sampat, Rishila Banerjee, Arun Dixit, Neev Patel, Suma AS, Divya P. Fantastic. No, so the point is you see Bishop F7, Rook F7, and you see Queen C4 pinning the rook and you say to yourself look that that looks good um, but then you find that bishop f7 rook f7 this queen is kind of trapped and knight c4 controls b6 and bishop g3 controls c7 so the queen is trapped so that's a beautiful uh, solution take take and knight to c4 well done excellent yeah shanks i was also thinking of queen c4 there but knight c4 is just simply killing what a move trapping the queen on a5 very good let's go to the next one mm -hmm. Okay, there should be some deflecting thing, but you should always look at checks and captures first. So, but but for me, it seems like there has to be some kind of a deflection in the position with this queen supporting c7. So, the first move that comes to my mind is rook e8. But, you know, I have actually developed a habit, which I think so should you, to never just say, okay, this is the move. To actually look at defenses for the opponent so after queen e8 what's happening and so on shashank says last few days the tactics are so complex goes over the head of few unrated casual players like me 
yes it is quite tough but i think it also shows what you should be looking for in a position and uh, if you can try to understand it basically the themes of what are the checks captures and what are the hanging pieces undefended pieces and what are the threats you should be able to at least think of one i understand bishop f7 and knight c4 was not at all easy but uh, yeah that's how tactics are i mean in chess they sometimes get really tricky so rook e8 better to better than rook e8 is actually to play rook e7 that's what everyone suggests and after bishop e7 to play queen c7 king a8 bishop f4 okay now knight has to move oh man this is beautiful i have seen ilam parthi has given the full line but who else rishila okay rishila has given the full line but perhaps rishila do you just copy what ilam parthi writes or you also think animesh mandal says finally i am in time good yeah mayur you are right you are almost there come on so rook e7 bishop e7 queen c7 king a8 bishop f4 threatening a mate on b8 knight b6 queen b8 rook b8 knight c7 mate tremendous i think one of the best puzzles ah b6 see that came as a surprise i never expected him to play b6 and suddenly you're like oh i didn't see that move okay rishila you don't copy that's good good to know now what do you do here yeah shanks you are right but b6 came as a surprise one way to to look at it could be uh to just go rook f7 and G b a5 knight c7 that could be one way but i guess there could be another way yeah take the queen and rook take c7 maybe rook c7 then a6 you have to be careful yeah i was thinking rook f7 b5 knight c7 then d5 is hanging and uh, you could try for different things but doesn't look very very convincing could be something else yeah convincing enough i mean yeah pawn pawns are equal maybe i'm just looking for something better like knight c7 b a5 knight a6 doesn't work maybe you should we should take and play this yeah today's mission is 2750 that's for sure take this or bishop f4 then bishop d6 let's take this okay nice let's go to the next one bishop c3 was played the last move black to move now look at the undefended pieces look at the pieces which are hanging here and also look at if there are some captures in the air welcome setu minocha slept at 2 am wow nice 
guys you what time do you all do all of you sleep so that you are anyone does anything before the class begins like it starts at 8 am but do you do anything before it or you are like wake up get ready or just wake up and come to the laptop for the class or come to the mobile phone Ah, uh, Shashank, I think Rook C7 would mean A6, right? Attacking the knight. That was the main issue. That's the reason why. N D6 says Rishila, Jayan Saha, Swayam Das, Shanks. Yeah n d6 and the bishop moves and then you play e4 yeah 11 a6 i get ready before the class says karan parik okay you, you sleep and just get ready scott says i sleep when i finish with my homework okay shrikant says i go long distance running i hope not now yeah don't go long distance running now. Yeah, this is a nice line that Ilamparthi has given, which is nd6, d3, knight d4, de4, queen d1. If rook a d1, then rook into uh, a2. But then you have bishop e5, right? Well, knight d6 definitely looks like the right answer, but d3 is a good defense because if knight d e4, ah, but maybe I can play knight into b5, no, to d3. Looks interesting. Yes, Mayur, there will be a 13th session tomorrow, so your holiday will be well utilized. Shank says I woke up at 7 and saw there's still time and slept. Shashank says I usually around 1 a.m. but often 3 a.m., 4 a.m., sometimes even 5 a.m. My God, that's too late. But you know, when you're doing PhD, sometimes you have to do that. Aditi says I have to study. So I start studying at 6 because my board papers are still pending. Oh, well, Aditi, I don't think your board papers are going to happen. So, but anyway, I, I'm not sure. Uh, Mayur Hegde says, I do exercise and yoga. Very good. All those who do some exercise before this class, excellent. You know, I was at this camp with Kramnik and Gelfand. And every day before the session began, there used to be a yoga training for all the youngsters. Of course, they didn't like to wake up and do that. But I saw that if they did it, they felt really fresh during the training session. So it was nice. Sri Kumar says, I sleep at 10 and wake up at 6. Okay. Indu Manoj, I wake up at 4 a.m. 4 a. to watch this. My God, that's amazing. Anushka Bhatt, I and my brother Abhinav get up at 4 a.m. and study. My papa teaches us. What, chess? Nice. You guys are quite disciplined. Everyone sleeps well on time. So it's good to know. Good. So working out before the class could be a good idea. Also having your breakfast before the class is a good idea. Not eating during the class is a good idea. But okay, if you eat nothing bad in that. Uh, night D6 is solved. But I am not so sure about the mood D3. Uh, because we understood bishop d6, d3 doesn't work because of e4. But d3 definitely looks interesting. Because knight b5, I can take bishop e5. While if uh, knight d e4 takes, takes. If I take here, that's also, I mean, not completely clear what's happening here. So...
Yeah, let's just have a look at the engine a bit and try to understand ND6, D3 and here it suggests not to take on E4 but to play Bishop G4. I don't know if that is the best move because after ND E4 takes Queen D1, uh, Rook A D1 or Rook F D1. I think Rook F D1 also looks not bad. Uh, but then you have Bishop G4, Rook E1. Bishop f3 takes and I think this resulting uh, bishop versus knight as per our imbalances should be slightly better for black especially because this pawn is weak here on a2 knight could sit on c5 so maybe he should take with the a rook but then uh, once again bg4 is the suggestion not to take on a2 because then bishop e5 even this is slightly better, but not so clear. Uh, taking knight into bishop first move, uh, after knight d6 you mean? Ah, uh, you mean here. Take, but then your knight on c4 is hanging and uh, also pawn on e5. So that's why it doesn't seem to work, Narayan and Srinivasan. Okay, let's finish now 27141. Let's go to the next one. We have to reach 2500. Yeah, true. Trupti bg4, then after bishop e5, bishop into f3, piece of. But um, bishop g4 was a nice move actually in all those positions. So here c4 is actually attacking your queen. It's black to move. What should black play? And your rook is also hanging. So you need to come up with something interesting. Yeah, 2750. <clears throat> How should white how should black continue here? Yeah, queen e5 looks good. I like the move queen e5 because king d1, queen f4. But queen e5, can he trick us some way? Because rook f5 can be met with queen e2 check. And that's winning. Queen e5, rook e4 is a possible move. Because rook e4, then now if I can't save the rook, then I it's hanging. But rook e4, queen b2, king d1. That is also not so clear. But queen e5, rook e4. And I need to save the rook somehow. Yeah, queen e5 is everyone's suggestion. But rook e4, ah, Suryan Shwarma. Also, Ilam Parthi, good job, guys. Ilam Parthi is really strong. Also, Suryan Shwarma. New Patel, you are absolutely right. Queen e5, rook f6 is met with queen e2. And then you take the rook. See, you are two pawns up. So if you can save your queen and rook, you are winning. But the problem is queen e5 is met with rook e4. What's the best move there after rook e4? Sumed, not rook b1, but rook g1. Correct. Jayan Saha, you, you got it right. Kirti Badole, good job. New Patel, very good. Queen a4, b3. That is the problem. Queen a4, b3 and then queen a3, king d1. Should be also better after queen into b4, but not so sure. Yeah. So queen e5, rook e4 and rook g1. So he's attacking our queen. We save our rook and also attack his queen. Okay, check. I think we should take it. Doesn't seem anything wrong taking it. Take and we've done it. Okay, good. Yeah, Atreya, well done. You also wrote rook e5. Okay, let's go to the next one now.
so this one is black to play yeah looks interesting to me four more elo to go i think if we do it right here we should be through funny verma says take on e4 but then after fe4 how do you continue yeah don't give me one moves give me the entire line that's what i want Rook e4, fe4, because if queen e4, bishop into d2 is hanging, so he must take fe4. Yeah, today I'm not making you nervous because I would like to do that tomorrow at 2800, not today or day after tomorrow. I don't know when. f5, Srishant, uh, yeah, not bad. f5. I'm thinking about queen c4 check and take on b4 so somehow f5 looks a bit too slow yeah practical thinking very good rook e4 fe4 queen b5 excellent but then king f2 he thought further queen e2 check king g3 and now bishop into d2 is the line over there or can white fight for something like let's say rook d1 ah there's bishop f4 check and take on c2 win the queen yeah so rook e4 f e ah he took with the queen but queen is just bishop d2 i don't see any problem with taking with the bishop that's just winning so the better defense would have been fe and then i thought queen b5 because this knight is beautifully pinned so no one can come to defend e2 square and he can't castle long he can't castle short so has to go king f2 and now check here and bd2 and now the threat is to give either bishop e1 or bishop f4 check and win the queen so that should work uh, there's, there doesn't look many good defenses here for white. Okay, we got only one elo for that. Ah, what's this? Okay, last move was d into c5. So, ah, okay, done. I solved it. I like to compete with you guys and sometimes after solving a few positions I start becoming faster with just uh, like age you know this old car which takes some time to begin but once it begins it, it's okay not bad the same way Shank says I'll be there for 2800 party this time yeah tomorrow or day after you have to be present both the days this looks hard and i've been afraid to try it rain d gray well in general don't try to be afraid of things because even if it's uh, tough the the simplest thing is to break it down i'll tell you something that i remember from my solving uh, days but first solve this yeah arun dikshit absolutely right Very good, Swayam Das, Atreya, Sani Deshpande, very good. Abhijit, M, Udaykant, uh, well, that's too simple a move. Yeah, like you want to take on C5 back, doesn't help you. Uh, Sani Deshpande and also I think... Uh, what was it? I think Arun. 
you both said that it's mate after a5 but actually it is not the king has a square on b5 if i'm not mistaken yeah kimaya a5 so the thing is knight b3 king b3 now you must take with the king because if you make any intermediate move i have knight into c1 check so you take with the king now queen into a4 check winning a piece back king into a4 knight c5 controlling b3 and after king b4 many of you thought a5 is just a mate but it is not the point is king b5 comes this is easy to miss this square i don't know somehow even i missed it uh, that the king can come to b5 and now if you play bishop c6 then there is king b6 mm, it's not so clear a5 is hanging but after king b5 there is a killer move it's found by ilam parthi here yes king a7 very good very good by arun new the new patel yes you are right also sani desh pande but you should have told me this in your first variation that's important knight b3 take queen a4 take knight c5 and we've solved it ah 2749 see always it gives us this last point to worry about okay the point was after king b4 a5 king b5 you have king a7 threatening bishop a6 mate and it is unstoppable okay let's go to the last one because we had made sure that we want to reach 2750 what sort of position is this it's a mate right am i missing something yeah shashank i think your donation suggestions were absolutely right we should think about the right candidate which i will suggest to you and if you are fine with it we'll go ahead and donate for them so thanks a lot shrishan says sama is planning to raid us well in general how do you know that he's planning to raid us it means you are also uh, watching there yeah bishop e5 shanks Abdul Kalam, Win Legaspi, Jayant Saha, Rajeshri Raghavesh, Smile Studio, very good. Everyone got it right. Bishop e5 uh, seems absolutely right because now the b file is open. It's a mate, so queen b5. You take rook b5, c b5, queen b6, and win the rook on c7. Yeah, bishop e5 is just very simple and clear. and still we are too sad for horrible yeah we should try one more should we try one more please let me know because somehow we just reached 2749.9 it seems okay so what do we play here should we do should we do another one or should we go to our two end games which i want to discuss today okay one more last one okay i think everyone says yes let's do it okay white to move king is out in the open it's not going to be easy but i have a feeling that we should be able to i mean the first move that strikes my mind was very very weird i don't know how i how that move i thought uh mayur gondalekar says one more will solve for on train ah you're going to work it's not a lockdown in japan oh my god you know the first move that came to my mind in this position was rook c4 i i just felt like if i get my bishop to c1 to check you that should be a good move 
because king h5 queen g4 is a mate and so i thought of rook c4 bishop b2 then i have queen g queen h4 and my rook comes to g4 i didn't calculate much which i should now but uh, that's for the first move that maybe it's completely wrong uh, but i'm just thinking ah swayam das says i've done this ah okay i've seen this says ilampati i had not seen this before but just like it struck like i need to vacate this square where to put my rook somewhere here looks too slow somewhere here also looks too slow let's go rook c4 so that queen h4 rook g4 comes with a tempo now we have to work out the details that is always a tough part because bc4 is queen h4 uh, sorry bishop c1 king h5 queen g4 mate and uh, if rook c4 f5 then queen f5 bc4 bishop c1 that also looks kind of fatal so bishop b2 should be interesting and then you go queen h4 check king g7 uh, rook g4 king f8 and now i guess the last move Yeah, Dandapani Kuku Swami, you have online class. Okay, see you later. Yeah, I was just looking at Rook C4, Bishop B2, Queen H4, King G7, Rook G4. Maybe there's something better that I'm missing. Atreya says, why complicated lines if easy lines are miss uh, are winning? Which which easy line is winning? Which, what am I missing? No, queen h8. There's bishop on b2, right? How can I play queen h8? Maybe queen h7, threatening, uh, threatening rook g8 mate. If bishop g7, rook g7, knight g7, queen h8 mate. And if knight g7, I have already queen h8 mate. Maybe, yeah, queen h7 there. What do you think? Queen h6 says say 2, but then bishop g7... Ah, you can directly play. Ah, okay. Queen h6 is just winning instead of queen h7. Queen h6, and now bishop g7, rook g7, knight g7, queen h8, and if knight g7, queen h8, mate. Very good. Very good. Okay, so rook c4 takes queen h4, check on g4, check on h6. Very important. I was thinking queen h7 also should do the trick. But then maybe f5 I have to think. Yeah. So queen h6 is a simple check. Bishop g7 takes. And now mate. So that was a good one guys. Beautifully done. I am happy that you all were able to solve it. Wow. Nandan says his rating is 2005. Very good Nandan. You have crossed 2000. I think today's aim should be 2100, okay? That would be fantastic if you can reach. Rook c4, bishop b2, queen h4, king g7, rook g4, king f8, queen h6. Yep, Arun Dixit, you are right. We are now 2757. Seven. Well, if we check 2700 plus, which is the website, I don't know, 2700 chess. How many of you visited? It's a great website. I just recently interviewed the founder of it. If you see 2757 means we just crossed Vishy Anand. So we are like the highest rated Indians. <laughs> just joking. But we became world number 15 in tactics. Yeah. Okay. So let's go. Uh, 
to to some end games yesterday we learned about bishop rook bishop versus rook and how to defend if you have just a rook you remember the two defensive methods if you remember it please let me know in the comment section multimaster and prad gupta says who is the baby in your thumbnail okay let's speak about that uh or oh, raid should i be happy when someone raids me or should i be sad like samay if you are watching this video thank you so much for your raid always appreciate people but you know what happens is lot of people come in and then everyone in the class is like raid 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 and they all go along with everyone and then only a few people remain back <laughs> but very nice i think what samay has been able to do is bring some freshness into chess bring some fun into chess and this is always really nice to see uh, and uh, so many people new people new names that i can see and maybe samay if if you can get the number of viewers to 500 i would be very happy right now we have 300 i see maybe we can reach 500 thanks to you Uh, and and basically i should wait till all of them go go away yeah very nice maybe we can go and see what sama is doing that would be interesting in the class is like raid 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 and they <laughs> all yeah yeah, yeah. he he's watch everyone and then <laughs> only a few people remain back <laughs> are okay, bhai turns bhai out very nice watching me samay has been able i am watching are bhai ye tareef hi kar leta hai bhai are love you us are torn in watching each other this is always really nice to see uh and um, <laughs> this is so many never I blush kar raha hai bhai someone to raise people my 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 thing that i like see i'll have my class going maybe someone will be like serious get the number of viewers then suddenly like 200 500 people will come in okay. right now we and have 300 i think dosto uske 300 bas 500 kar do please ek bar uske 500 kar do fir aa jao i'll send like 10 guys from my class and basically i should wait till all of them sagar raid or something those so please please i request make it 500 let's do okay. this okay let's do this nice Maybe let's let's get back to work someone is doing <laughs> that would be interesting Let, let's get back Somebody i think uh, doing, so all of you those so please score raid maro please it will be very sweet i think agar hum log ka class is like raid raid and aha yeah yeah he is he is watch everyone and one of the finest comedians will remain back are bhai turn out very nice watching you would want some as and i am what are bhai ye tareef hi kar deta hai like but it's funny yeah like right now on his channel he can do this himself twice really nice to see and okay this is so many i am just kar raha hai bhai i am just kar raha hai my my is that i have my class with some of you by you can get the number of nice suddenly like 200 500 people would come in right now and 300 i dosto uske teen बस पांच सौ कर दो प्लीज एक नॉर्मल हो जाते हैं सागर शाह इफ यू वाचिंग दिस लेट मी टेल यू दैट यू आर अ लवली पर्सन यू आर अ स्पेशल पर्सन एंड यू आई एम वेरी मतलब आई एम इंस्पायर्ड बाय यू सागर शाह लव यू बाय कीप डूइंग व्हाट यू डू यू आर देयर ओजी आई एम जस्ट हियर फॉर अ व्हाइल आई विल बी गॉन टुमारो आई डोंट नो व्हाट यू वाज टॉकिंग आई आई डिड एंड आई रिस्पेक्ट यू फॉर दैट लॉट्स ऑफ लव डेस्कटॉप ऑडियो टू लाउड सो सो आई आई I mean, I couldn't hear it, but maybe you guys could could hear it. Ah, so he sent them to make it five hundred. Guys, it's okay. I mean, there are some people in this session who are like, "Let's get back to training." I understand, but you know, this is something new for me to see. <laughs> That's so many raid, so so many people raiding. I can't I can't ask you any question because it's like if I ask you what is the best move here it's like one I can see bishop c3 and then suddenly samay raid samay raid samay raid and then another question I ask you like bishop a1 and then samay raid samay raid so
okay so my next time what we should do is when you are playing online we should have your video on this stream and the people who are here will suggest moves to you in that way i think your aim of reaching 1200 or what was it yeah 1200 would be would be completed in like a day or two days and then you move on to 1300 Tanu just says, I saw three sagas. Whew. Okay. Very nice. New, new things to see, new things to learn. So guys, uh, I guess if Samai's channel could also learn out of what we are doing right now. So I'm going to talk about two end games which made a very big impression on me. Uh, it was Capablanca Tartakover and Lilenthal versus Smislo. So you can tell me which one should we look at first, Capablanca Tartakover or Lilenthal Smislo. Well, reaching 500 today is impossible. It's impossible because uh, you know, the, the momentum is going down. Next time, summer you should send in people with full force so that you reach 500. Yeah. Right now, it's like 300. It went, I guess, till 350 or maybe even 400. But, you know, at the end of the session, I get a box which says highest number of concurrent viewers. And... Uh, Usually when I was doing imbalances, there used to be around 350. Now that it's one hour ahead, there are around 250 people, sometimes 260. And because of this raid, it will show me 400 people. And then when Amruta is asleep, I'll wake her up and say, hey, look, today 400 people came to the show. And she's like, wow, what happened? And then I'll be like, my classes are just amazing. Everyone enjoys it so much. So 400. Okay, Kappa Blanca is what everyone says. So Smislo goes next. <clears throat> we, we first start with Kappa Blanca. And I really uh, like this game. Because this is one of the games that I studied in my one in my favorite book called 62 most instructive games of chess beautiful book uh, if you haven't seen it uh, or read it before then uh, then please do so and one of the games was Capablanca versus Tartakova okay uh, in the game was d4 Uh, Nandan, we are starting with Lucina or Philidor. No, we are going to learn some practical rook end games today. Aha, thumbnail story. Okay, let's. Okay, Shashank, see you tomorrow. See, see you tomorrow and we will finish this game and then look at the thumbnail story because I was going to tell you the thumbnail story but we spend a lot of time uh, due to the raid uh, and... Uh, <clears throat> That's why uh, we are going to now focus on the Capablanca endgame. So F5 was played. C4, Knight F6. So after this game, we look at the thumbnail one. Bishop G5, Bishop E7. Knight C3, castles. E3, B6. So it's come some kind of a Dutch defense, but black has got a normal position and I like how uh, bishop is on b7, a nicely positioned, uh, controlling e4, how this pawn on f5 also controls e4, how this knight on f6 also controls e4. It's like a nice setup. But I, I also like how white has developed all his pieces nicely. Queen e8. Queen e2. Yeah, this is the Dutch defense. 
knight e4 was played and so he took queen uh, and he took back here knight c3 uh, have to take back because queen was hanging so he took on e7 and now let's look at the imbalances in the position how many here attended the imbalance session of the training so all those who didn't attend also please let me know how many uh, attended also let me know so you can actually think about what should white play in this position uh, and also not just what should white play but what are the imbalances who's better why what's happening yes capablanca is white black is tartak over okay shrishant atten attended ilam party jayan saha Pan pankaj kunal kimaya shivam so all of you no imbalances uh, so let's try to assess this position based on the imbalances Keshav Kumar Jha says I could not attend due to my duties okay well, you can always watch it now Kunal Singh says, piece development white is better as both minor pieces are developed. Yes, very good. That's a good point. But, you know, black has black is only one move away from developing. So, it's not so bad for black. Black has attacking prospects in this position. Excellent attacking prospects. Uh, yes, possibly. But, you know, when you start playing a move like G5, G4... I can just play e4 and then suddenly it seems like the attacking prospects are not so huge and the king starts to get a little bit weak so you have to be careful because the center is not fixed yet white has more queenside space says sumay white has superior minor pieces white is ahead in development white has the initiative um i would say yes white has White has more queenside space, that's true. Superior minor pieces, perhaps, yeah, that's also okay. But I think one very important factor that Sumed missed out was the double pawns on the c5. Shank says black has a better bishop, white has more space, double c pawn, b file is semi open, white has slight lead in development, position is around equal. Not bad. I like this more objective. Arun Dikshit says white has double pawns, white has half open c file, okay, b file maybe. White has more space in the center, black has better pawn structure, black has good attacking prospects, material is equal, evaluation is equal yeah i would say it's around equal this position mm, so by that logic white should start playing a little bit more uh, actively and so in the game he went for the move a4 and this is not a bad move at all uh, he wants to play a5 if possible so black took on f3 which which came as a surprise actually because I, I think why not knight c6 here? I mean, what's wrong with it? Looks like a perfectly fine move. You can put your knight on a5, looking at this pawn. White may think of some, at some point, to play c5. This is a very typical sacrifice. Stakes and you can play rook f b1, putting pressure here. But I don't see it to be like really bad position. So, bishop f3 came as a big surprise. I don't know, Capablanca also must not have expected this move. But black's plan was like, now I'll put my knight on a5 and I'll try to attack this. So, Capablanca said, uh, okay, I'll play rook fb1, rook ae8. 
well the the main reason for showing this game in its entirety is to show you how it developed but the main part is of course the end game queen f3 d6 rook e1 queen d7 e4 finally e4 was played he took and now you will see there is a weakness here and also h7 is attacked so he played g6 g3 king f8 king g2 these are all natural moves for capablanca you know g3 improve the king's position double on the e file is just simple so g3 king f8 king g2 rook f7 h4 and now d5 was played and then after takes takes take 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 we reach another very interesting end game position here now calmly think about the imbalances for all those who were not who are not aware of the imbalances I will show you the screen here. I still have them nicely placed because I remember them all the time. You have superior minor piece, pawn structure, space, material, control of an open file or weak square, lead in development, initiative, king safety. All of this have to be remembered and then we go to go back to the position and now let's try to think what should white play here i mean that is a second question but first thing what you need to think about is who is better what are the imbalances because in, in thinking about imbalances also gives you ideas like how to play in the position so white is favorable as there is bishop and pawns on both sides that's a good point current parik because bishop always likes pawns on both sides so in this position the bishop on d3 might well be more valuable than the knight especially because look at these pawns they are fixed on the color of the bishop White has more space. That's true. Smile Studio. Ashley Ram Jatan says initiative. Who has the initiative? White. Why do you say so? Initiative is nothing but the ability to create threats and make your opponent respond to your ideas. That's the point. White has superior minor piece. C3 pawn is backward, says Ilam Parthi. Very good, Ilam Parthi. This is very important to see that this pawn is weak and backward. Also, this is an isolated pawn. There is a pawn majority here because black has only two pawns. So, so superior minor piece, but pawn structure wise, white has an advantage of this majority, but also a weak pawn here and a weak pawn here on C3 and A4. Then we move to space. I think white has more space on the king side. You move to material, material is even. You go to weak squares, open files, you will see there is an open C E file in this position. Black has a semi-open F file, white has a semi-open B file. This has to be seen. Now, try to think a bit about this position a little more deeply. Uh, and you see initiative. White to move here. Can he create threats? Because if black gets some time, and is able to let's say do something like rook f6 rook c6 and attack this pawn Ooh, that would be dangerous of course you should take care of uh, tactics like bishop b5 bhaskar bharadwaj says all pawns are on dark squares for a white and light square bishop makes white stronger yeah that's true that is true sumed ram take White has good bishop while black knight has c4 square. Yeah, c4 square is a weakness. Definitely. Pawn, the square in front of a backward pawn is a weakness. 
Why does 3 to 2 majority? Why does an open E file? Why does more space? Why does initiative due to passive knight? Okay. Jace imbalances. Why does the light squared bishop? Black has a knight. Why does backward C pawn? White pieces are well placed. Why does more space? King safety is equal. Also remember to give an evaluation at the end. Setu Minocha has come up with the right move. Taking into consideration that this bishop is attacking these pawns, it's white to move, he has the initiative, he has a kingside majority. So what is the right move for white in this position? What did Capablanca play? Yes, Aditya Anand, you are absolutely right. Mayur Hegde, Abdul Kalam, Practical Thinking, Sumed Ramteke, Sani Deshpande, Ilam Parthi, very good. Divya HL, excellent. And the right move is H5. Very good. Breaking things up, taking the initiative. If he takes on H5, we are going to play Rook H1, picking up this pawn and then creating another weakness on H7 to attack. So, black to move now. What should black do? Because now you also know black's imbalances. How, sh how should black continue in this position okay so hum shirode don't worry about the problem of chess base account we'll see about it later let's first focus on capablanca's game yes h5 was played and now white to move Yes, Rook F6, Keshav the winner, Anup Datta, Vinle Gaspi, Practical Thinking, Kirti Badole, very good. Rook F6, Ilam Parthi, well done. Rook to F6. And you will see that now it's a race between making your imbalance better than your opponents, right? So, 8G, 8G, Rook went to H1 because that's the most logical thing you can do. You want to come in with your Rook to H6 or H7 and if you are able to win this pawn, these two passers would be very strong. I was thinking to myself Rook C6 but then there is Bishop B5 losing the Rook. So, that's why Black first played King F8 which is an extremely logical move to remove the king out of the pin and then white jumped into the seventh rank we know that one of the main reasons why you control an open file is to reach the seventh rank and he managed to reach the seventh rank attacking these pawns black said okay i'm going to make use of my imbalance as well and i'm going to play my rook to c6 now rook comes to c6 And it's white to move again. What should white play here? Okay, guys, don't copy each other's answers. This is the worst thing you can do because, you know, it's all about you learning here. If you can't learn, then how can you improve? Yeah, so please. Try to think on your own, even if it's a wrong answer, doesn't matter. I'm more pleased if you give your own answer than a right answer. I mean, it'd be better if it's your own answer with the right answer. So, why wouldn't black play king f7 instead of king f8? Well, because rook h7 check wins the c7 pawn. While on king f8, rook h7, you can go rook c6 defending the pawn. That's the reason. Yeah, in the game, white went, you know, he started making use of his imbalance. He played the move g4. Now, uh, rook into c3 would be met with bishop into g6. And somehow you can sense it that even if white will lose another pawn here or even both the pawns, these two pawns, these two pawns combined with the bishop and uh, rook, will give white a clear advantage something uh, that i i want i was thinking was f5 rook d4 king g3 
rook k4 and you can see that white is actually black is actually won two pawns now he's two pawns up but look at his knight rook everyone is out of the game and after f6 this is just a winning configuration there is a mate coming up and this would be met with f7 and so you have to be very careful in such a position okay Yeah, g4 is a fine move that was played in. By the way, how many of you have seen this game? I know Pankaj Panchal has seen this game. He said about it. He speaks about it in his chat. But has anyone else? Nice. Mayur is back home after the train journey. Good to see Mayur. Mayur, you can make your soup though. Why not? Would not rook g7 prevent rook f h7? Ah, you mean, but then the rook would be passive, right? Baskar on g7, it's very passive. And uh, here at least rook is creating his own threats on the c3 pawn. Vijay Krishna, welcome to the show and thank you for enjoying it. He's from Hyderabad. Okay, I have seen the game says Arun, Sairam Sampath says no, Ilam Party says I have seen it, Karan Parik I have not seen it, good, all those who have seen it, is also more things uh, to learn, you know, sometimes you don't remember all the moves, but now you can look at it with greater focus and keep the key moments in mind, I always like to revise everything so that it is uh, much more solid in my head okay so g4 he played knight to c4 and now uh, kappa went g5 fixing this weakness and asking black what do you want to do if you don't do anything i'll come up with my king Maybe even take this and then play f5 and then my rook pawn and the king will be very strong. So knight e3 check, king f3. Knight f5 and uh, Capablanca took and gf. Okay. Now... Uh, this position try to think a bit as to what would you play here as white try to think a bit pawns are equal we have reached a practical rook end game okay you are kartik vijay okay not vijay krishna Yeah, Aditya Anand, you are right. Rook D7 says Namita Chede, not a bad move, not a bad move. Win Legaspi, you are right. Ilam Parthi, you are right. Always remember, in a game, it's extremely important to activate your king. If you don't activate your king, if you keep your king passive, then that doesn't work. For example, you go g6, I, first of all, I can take, but even if I take on uh, c3, push your king back, that's just bad news for you. You cannot win with one pawn and a rook here. You need to get your king, but how to get your king? If Okay, 
Hi everyone, uh, I'm just using uh, Amruta's phone. I don't know if the internet connection will last, but let's hope that it does. Well, it's uh, 4G data, so maybe not much, but we should finish this game at least. Uh, this would be epic, yeah? The electricity is gone, Wi-Fi is not working, I'm on my battery in my laptop, uh, and uh, this is the, uh, what do you say, the phone internet. <laughs> well, in, in Mumbai, the electricity never goes, almost never, at least in my area. I don't know why it has gone today, absolutely no idea. Okay, so in this position, White went with the move King G3. So it's a brilliant move. In fact, one of the most fantastic moves ever seen. Why? I will tell you. Because after Rook C3, King H4, now Black naturally would want to win another pawn. By the way, if there is a lag here, please do bear with me because you know it's just impossible to for the phone internet to sustain with uh, this kind of data it takes a lot of data to to stream uh, so rook f3 was played in the game and this is very logical because you are winning another pawn here but turns out this is a mistake a complete mistake he should have played the move a6. We'll come back to it later. Now rook f3. You go g6. And takes king g5. And you will see that how the king was activated very quickly. And it's not about the quantity of pieces you have. But the quality that you have on the board. And in this position... If he takes on d4, what would you play here as white? Now, tell me. It's actually a very important concept to remember. And I would like you all to do that. Maybe in this position, it's pretty easy. But sometimes it's not so simple. What should white play? What should white pay, white play here? Yeah, Sumit, Neve, Karan, Pani Varma, Yan Muldock, Pradyumna, absolutely right. Ilam Parthi, Ajay Kumar, Amay Kanitkar, Shre Baheti, Shivam Chaudhary, Kirti Badole, Vin Legaspi, Amay Nirgudkar, Shri Shant, Anirudh Balaji, Indu Manoj, Jayant Saha. Very good guys. All of you are absolutely right and uh, Swayam Das has rightly pointed out King F6 is the correct move to keep this F5 pawn as an umbrella to shelter from the check. For example, if this very position I were to remove off this pawn, you know, and bring it like this, this is already fine for black. He'll just give a check from F4. And he will be completely okay in this position. But because there is a pawn on f5 in that position, this uh, but because there is this pawn on f5, it, there are no checks and it is like a shield. It's like an umbrella to the rain of checks that comes on your body. Okay. So this is a beautiful part of this uh, end game. King e8 and then you take on c7. You could also play rook h8, king d7, g7. Rook g4, queen and this end game is also winning. Although white black has four pawns, they are all very slow and white king will pick up each one of them. So, rook e4 was played in the game and now came king f6. Threatening a mate on h8, so king g8 and check king h8 
and you take now threatening again a mate on c8 so rook went back and white now picked up the pawn on f5 this is equal pawns now on the board but white is just very active and with the g passer he finished off the game very quickly rook e4 king f6 check king e5 rook here g7 you can't take it because then i'll clear up the other pawns and win the uh, win the d5 pawn king g8 rook a7 rook g1 picked up and now he's two pawns up and slowly capablanca went on to win this end game with now rook c8 d7 d8 coming up tata cover is so this was a very nice example of how the king has to be activated at all costs during defense ah uh, well the back the internet is back maybe i will switch on to uh, i mean the electricity is back i'll switch on to my normal internet maybe there will be a small lag when i do that but please bear with me what i would like to show you uh, is this position because it was subjected to a lot of analysis here rook f3 was just too green and it allowed this easy entry for the white king so my question to you is what should black play here you know what black must Okay, I hope that I'm back with my good internet. Shank says A6, Rishila A6, yes, Savita Yonal A6, Fani Verma, very good, Rahul Gupta A6, B5, very good, Ritu Pathak, excellent. Uh, if you play, by the way, rook c6 back, I think it's slightly passive because then the rook is once again tied up and I could go king h5 with the idea of g6, king g5 or king h6 and slowly win that position. So a6 is definitely an excellent move trying to create your own passer. Trying to create your own passer. So in the position, now white can go g6, but uh, after g6, the problem is that the rook is well placed. So even if the king comes like this, I can give a check, which would mean that there will be no mating nets. So let's say if you go b5, takes, takes, king g5, I can go b4, you see I'm not waiting. And if you go king f6, I have rook c6 followed by rook b6 and I push my pawn. So even black can start to play for a win. But rook f7, king g8, rook d7, b3, rook d5, b2, rook b5, king g7 takes. And somehow white does manage to win but you can see that it was not at all easy in this position. Okay, going back, instead of playing g6 in this position over here, white could also play king h5. b5, take, take, and now king g6. And his plan was that now you have to give me a check or else my king... Okay, maybe it's not necessary to give a check because you can even push your pawn. There is no mate yet. So king g8, but if he plays b4... Then king into f5, b3, check, and king rook b8 is just winning because now these two pawns here are just too strong. I'm going to play f uh, f5, maybe king h5 if I can, f6, and uh, my pieces are going to be all over black's king, my pawns. So instead of b4, if you play rook c6, check, king f5, b4, rook h3, rook b6, rook b3. Again, this is winning position for white. 
because of these two passers. And lastly, king g8 is the best move. And then after rook h1, it is possible to play rook d7, but then there's rook c6 followed by b4 and rook b6. So therefore, white decides to just go back b4, king f5, king g7. And uh, the final evaluation of this position is not so sure. I think black can hold it somehow because of his pieces, but it has to be analyzed further. But it just goes to show that even in the most beautiful endgame here, there is always defense available if you play it right. A6, B5 was a correct defense, but King H4 uh, was a nice try by Capablanca. Rook F3 was just fell into the trap because after take King G5, it's all over. When the king was on H5, why not RH3? King G6, RH3 then. Okay, let's talk about the thumbnail. So if you look at the thumbnail, that's me with my nephew. His name is Shaurya, uh, Shaurya actually. And Shaurya means courage. But I feel that every young child, young kid is always so courageous. Uh, of course, I didn't have a younger sibling. So I was the youngest and I never saw a young kid growing up in front of my eyes. Uh, but with Shaurya, I, I did that. Uh, and uh, I realized that he was just so brave about so many things and it's not like he was trying to be brave it just comes naturally to them he wanted to walk and he would fall but he would get up and he would try to walk he would fall again and it just didn't affect him I mean it was so amazing to see this right in front of your eyes uh, I started to think that maybe as we grow older, we are just so afraid of failures that we don't even try. For example, how many of you here have been wanting to play a different opening all your life? Let's say something like the Rui Lopez or the Open Sicilian, but all the time are worried about too much theory. It's because you are so much afraid of failure that you don't even take chances. But when you look at these young kids who learn so much in this couple of years from the age of say one to three, they start walking, they start talking, they start uh, to learn how to do their normal activities in the day, to eat food, to chew and I mean so much. And all of this is because they just keep trying to do things and that's what I, I really like it. And the second thing which I learned from him is how to be present in, in the moment. For example, whenever I see him, he's so happy, he's so lively, never tensed, never stressed, never thinking about something that happened few hours ago. And uh, all of this is no compliment to him as such because every young kid is like that. But somehow as we grow older, we just lose many of these good qualities. And with this, I want to sort of, with this thumbnail, I wanted to pass this message to you that, you know, be like a young kid, be like a two year old, be like a one and a half year old, be bold, be fearless and don't worry too much about the consequences if you believe what you are doing is right. Okay. Good. <clears throat> Today is also online FIDE online nations cup Mayur Gondalekar says Sagar is amazing he can make something as commonplace as a baby growing up sound so amazing I, I think it's uh, it's really amazing how these young kids are able to inspire us if we if we look at them closely they learn so much and that's why even we are starting to have some really strong players at the age of 12. Some of them even here in the live show. Okay, so today is Nations Cup and I just wanted to give you a small uh, briefing of how it would be. So here, uh, if you go here, let me go to chessbase.in. Today is the first round. And India will take on USA and rest of the world on day one. So it's going to be Anand, 
Vidit, Hari Krishna, Hampi. These are the top four players. But then there is also Harika and Adiban. Six players in a team. USA has Nakamura, Karuana, Dominguez, and Irina Crush. Also Wesley So, I think, uh, and one more. Maybe Karissa Yip. I, I have to rem remember uh, who is in US. But these top four players are going to fight it out against each other. Uh, and there are strong teams like Europe has Aronian, MVL, Duda, Muzichuk. Russia has Nepo, Artemiev, Karyakin, Goryachkina. Wei Yi, Ding Liren, Wang Hao, Ho Yifan. I think China is just very strong. Black, uh, rest of the world has Rajabo, Firuja, Amin Basim and uh, Maria Muzichuk. I think uh, overall it seems like India is going to have a tough time. Uh, especially <coughs> China and USA look really strong. Russia as always is threatening and so is Europe actually. So very very fun event actually. And uh, the first round is going to start today at 6.30 p.m. IST. Uh, I don't know if I'll be streaming live today, but I'll be having most probably roundup videos after the round ends. And the round two will be... Okay, hopefully the internet will not go, go back. Uh, and you will be able to follow the games live on chessbase.in. So you go to chessbase.in and we will have a live games broadcast page and hopefully I'll be coming on for live commentary in the coming days. Okay. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting event I think uh, and maybe India how they do in this tournament will will be quite interesting to watch we are definitely not the strongest team we are fifth seeds actually out of six teams so not going to be easy okay let's now go back and check out another game that i have prepared for you and this one is definitely one of the favorite ones which i when i saw it i liked it so much So I'm not going to tell you who's white, who's black, so that you you don't get the idea. But tell me who is better in this position. Is it white or black? It's black to move, by the way. But who is better here? Yeah, Shank says it will be amazing if we make it to top four. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I will wash my hands. I am not in contact with anyone right now. So I will do that. Don't worry. White is better. Plus minus Reshu Jain. Rishila Banerjee white. Shubham Soni white. Sriyana Malya white. Uh, black is better says New Patel because of his king activity. Okay. But do you see white is already a pawn up and is attacking these pawns as well. So many of you say plus minus or you know white is better. What do you think should black play in this position? If it's it is black to move, what should black play? Ilam Parthi says this is in complete endgame course. Good. Most of the times good players, it's very difficult to teach them something new because they know most of the things this is also a good sign of a strong player he knows most of the things that is true about Ilam Parthi good he's using all his time to gain more and more knowledge 
Well, if you see this rook is cutting off the white king. This is really good news because this king is passive. But at the same time, this rook is tremendously active. These are double pawns. This is a passer. These h7, g7 are attacked. So only way for black to actually survive in this position is by means of one thing, which is activity. Activity at all cost. Remember, just like how Capablanca activated his king, black should also do that. But if he goes king e5, there is takes. If he goes king e4, there is rook f7. And somehow king f3 is impossible because this hangs. Okay. Uh, so that is the reason why what black did here was he played the move g5. Very good guys. All those who said g5. That's the correct move. Rook into h7. Yes, Honi Arora, it's true. It's true uh, that there is three months subscription of Chessbase account for one who guesses right who would win. Uh, what is it? How would India fare in the Asian in the online nations cup? Which place would the Indian team come? So you can go online. And comment over there. Okay, so rook h7 and black took on and then came rook h6 check, king e5, and he took here. And I when I saw this game for the first time, I was thinking to myself, oh my god, c5 is hanging. I'm pawn down. Uh, this will be I'm sorry, I'm two pawns down. This will be three pawns down. Unbelievable. What should I do? So here. Now think and think for at least a few moves for white, a few moves for black and tell me if black is completely lost or does he have some hope? How should black continue? How should black continue in this position? Well, practical thinking if g4 I will play rook take c5 check. Vipan Kumar says I have seen very famous game I saw in one book using shelter. Yeah, true. New Patel says king e4, king f3. But new, if I play, if you play king e4, I'll play rook into c5. If you play king f3, I'll play rook into f5. Raging bull, very good. Raging bull is right. Win Legaspi, you are right. And the idea is to play. Yes, Karan, but how do you execute it? King e5, rook c5. If you play king f3, rook into f5 is hanging. Yes, Savita, you are right. Savita, Yonal. And so the right answer is king e4, but after rook c5 comes the most critical move of the game. And this is what I think we learned also from Capablanca's game. And you should learn from here as well. Mayur Gondalekar says, swindle mindset, said c pawn is gone, go towards the king with threats of king e4, rook c5, f4, ef4, gf4, gf4, GF4. maybe leave the g pawn alone, king f3. You are right, but you don't need to recapture the pawn because after takes, you go king f3 straight away and you can see that this pawn acts as an umbrella okay so you learned about the important concept of umbrella there are no checks if you had gone directly in here then rook into f5 would have come but f4 now takes king f3 just doesn't allow rook into f5 that's the point very good all of you who saw that just look at the final position he cannot escape the perpetual checks check king h2 
check king g1 check and he had to agree to a draw if he tried to be too smart and played h4 then maybe after check check and if he tries to run away this would be a very pretty checkmate with four extra pawns but that one last black pawn checkmates the white king uh, h3 check here and uh, it's a draw so this just goes to show that even in spite of being four pawns down black managed to hold because of his king activity and this shows how important activity is in the end game don't be passive this is the golden rule that i would like all of you to remember the golden rule for playing end games is to activate your king all the time if you do not activate your king you will be in trouble okay you know i have been guilty of not following this advice so many times that i have lost game after game uh, because i was not aware of what to do so this position by the way in that game white was lelenthal black was mislo okay Karan, if you play g4, rook c5, check king f2, rook a1, check uh, rook a2, check king e1, rook a1, king d2, my king will run away. There are no perpetual. Yes, you guys, yes, Smyslo was black. And now, this is my game. I'm white against Vikramaditya Kulkarni. Uh, this is in 2010. I was playing with the white pieces. I'm pawn down. I can take this pawn here. What should I play here? White to move. White to move in this position. Yeah, Shre Bahati, you take rook into a6. That's what I did in the game. Anyone? What should White play here? Yes, New Patel, absolutely right. Savita Yonal, Raging Bull, Shri Devi, very good. Shivendra, maybe not f3. I don't like that move. Jayant Saha, right? Jace, if you take your king to h2, it's just taking him out of the center. You don't really want to go there. The right move was king f1. The reason for that is because if you played rook a6 like I did in the game, I would have been in trouble because of rook d1 check, king h2, and c4 rook c6 king d5 rook c7 rook a1 and this is just winning position for black He's, he has the material is equal but the a pawn is under attack and look at the difference in activity of the king so that is why as you all have rightly pointed out rook pawn on a6 is not running as trupti gadge says just go king f1 and after king d4 now you can take and play king e2 and this is a draw i should have played this and i would have drawn the game but turns out that i played rook a6 he didn't take now i should have gone king f1 but i played rook c6 you can see how many basic errors are made by even decently strong players uh, i think at some point there this position was drawn now takes rook h6 rook f2 a7 rook a2 rook h7 king f3 and now i should have played rook g7 when after king g2 rook f7 it is a draw this position um but i went 
rook into h5 and then after king g4 which was a great move by him uh, i lost this game it's quite a i mean every every loss is heartbreaking but this one was slightly more because it was quite drawish in nature Okay, I'm going to give you one more position for my games because, you know, uh, if you can figure these things out, you will, you will understand that even in normal games, these are the little things that are possible. This one was against Patty Alexander, who is a strong player now. He was 2150 at that point, but now he is, I don't know what's his rating now. His name is Alexander Batty, B-A-T-T-Y. If you can tell me, I, I guess there's a nice story about him. Black to move. My last move was King G1. What would you play here with black? King e6 means just rook into g5, Jace. You just can't give up a pawn. King e6, rook into g5, and then I have two passers. Yeah, Baku Choku, you, you are right. His Fide Elo is 2115, really? Okay. No, Batty, B A T T E Y, Batty. I thought he should be around 2400 or so. No? Yeah, 2357 is the highest he's international master. Correct. If I'm not mistaken, he was actually, uh, he started playing chess at a very, very late age. Like, I think around 20, 25, something like that. And then uh, he was just so focused somehow. He, he had made up this entire plan that I will do these books and I will do so much study. And I uh, will play so many events. And if you see, he was playing all these closed round robin events in Hungary. And he became an IM very quickly. Yeah. Uh, Savita Yonal, you are absolutely right for the move. Mayur Hegde as well. The idea is, okay, if you go g4, this pawn will become slightly weak. I can go king f2, king g3. The right move is always to go rook to c8. Uh, in such positions, activity is the key because after I took, he gave me a, he played rook c2. Take, take, and even though he was a pawn down, he easily managed to hold. This was a nice move, giving back a pawn. And uh, yeah, I don't know why he didn't take on a2. Yeah, rook d6 and take, but that's also a draw here. In the end, I managed to put some pressure on him, but it wasn't enough. These two pawns do not win against uh, a, a rook, which is active. So that was a draw. And then we agreed to a draw. So, but rook c8 is one of those moves which you must make. You mustn't play passively like king e7. Uh, then this is hanging anyway. So let's say g4 first. And then king f2 and then king e7. This is all very passive like king e6. Maybe rook d4. And then you can take on g4 or play king g3, king g4. But 
first if you begin with rook c8 that is just much more strong okay. yeah i think that was all for today it was about activity to understand this and i want to show you one game uh, of atreya because he sent me this entire database of his own games uh, let me see if i can pull it up from somewhere uh, Yeah, I think one of the games which I liked very much was his game against uh, Nitin Pai. It was really well played game. And uh, yeah, this is the position I want you to think about. Here. So Atreya is black. And his opponent is Nitin Pai, who's a very smart young fellow. He is around 1700, but he is in IIM. He he graduated from IIT Chennai. Now he's in IIM Ahmedabad. So very talented young guy. Uh, and here he played the move Rook C2. Now Atreya to move. It's Black to move in this position. How do you continue here with Black? Very nice tactical play by the youngster. Kunal Singh, when will you update your blog on 22 days improving chess so that I can get the PGM files of the game you displayed? Well, you already, I think it's updated. If you just Google it, there are all the things that were taught. Honi Arora, how to see Nations Cup live uh, on chessbase.in. You can watch it with the games and also the commentary and everything will be put in. Yeah, Ilam Parthi, Fani Verma, Alan K. Thomas say knight d5. But did you see the defense to knight d5? He ha White has a defense there. N d5. Yeah, ND5 is a free pawn, but there is actually something very interesting here. After ND5, white goes for the move B4, yes. And uh, this is what I like, that he was very much switched on, even though I think Atreya looked at uh, the move. Yes, Neil Patel, you are right, B4. Could mean that he would just lose a piece if you move the queen. But there is something very special that black had prepared. Yes, Sumed, you are right. New Patel, you are right. Yes, Jaivir Singh, you can see it on Chess Base India website live. Knight D5, Ilam Party, you are right. The point was to play queen a4 and this is a move that can be missed because after ed the point is to take on e1 and queen c2. Looks simple now that you see it but actually during the game it's not so easy. Good job. Atreya uh, did a very good job. Rook c4, queen d1, rook d1, knight e3 and he resigned. White won the game. By the way, Atul is here. Uh, is my very good friend and uh, he also has his live sessions in the evening at 5 p.m. So all those who are interested can visit his classes and uh, he always takes games of one top player. So today, yesterday was I guess Kasparov, maybe Anand, before that Capablanca, Botvinnik. I don't know what is there today. Uh, Atul, maybe you can... Uh, Tell us about what uh, what are you going to teach today? Uh, there was another game which was just tremendous. I think it was between Tanmay Jain uh, and uh, Atreya. 
Atreya Nandi is his name. Surname is N A N D Y. Atreya, which place are you from? Which which city? Okay, so Atreya was white in this game, and this is a nice uh, opening. It's called Queen. Uh, when you put your queen on e2, I think the name was given something like Karl, C A R L, which is central attack Roy Lopez, where you go castle c3, and if d4 is not possible, you bring your rook to d1 and play d4. And I have seen this. Uh, being employed by many strong players, Nigel Short used to like to play it before. Uh, B5, Bishop B3, Bishop E7, C3, D6, H3. Yeah, Warrell, Warrell attack, Bishop C2, uh, C5, Castles, Castles and Rook D1 with the idea of D4. And now. Uh, he gained space in the center and I think uh, the way he attacked was very imaginative. So black is trying to play on the queen side somehow, you know, hoping for playing c4, then if b4, then go back, try to play b a5, open up the position. But uh, Atre already started his attack on the king side, which is nice. Uh, White to move. What do you play here? So first you go knight f1, h6. And now I think Atreya went for a very interesting plan here. g4. Which is very interesting. Just pushing his pawns forward. And then after h5, he went g5. And then knight king h2, knight g3, rook f8, rook g1, king h8. And now came the next strike. I just like how he plays without any fear. Takes, takes, knight h4, queen h5. And uh, this was a beautiful attack. Well, I hope the last few minutes uh, the internet will let us live in peace. Uh, and uh, so Atreya. Uh, I think we, we were able to see his game and it was really a great one. Uh, thanks for sharing them. Uh, big talent. You should keep an eye out for him. Uh, definitely to watch out for. There was one question that was being asked repeatedly. I think Soham Shirode it was who said he wants to know how to use the feature of... Uh, so I'm just going to get my screen share on and uh, yeah I don't know if this works but maybe my internet doesn't work uh, Soham if you can just write to us on uh, chessbaseindia at gmail.com we'll try to solve it because I don't think right now uh, my internet is working somehow there's some issue so I'll figure it out later but guys Keep in mind this golden rule of endgames, activity. Be it your piece, be it a rook, be it a king, you must always stay active. And if you are able to do that, you will be able to play better endgames. <clears throat> and keep in mind, like Capablanca, when you are trying to win, to activate your king, giving up pawns. And like Smyslo, when you are trying to defend, also giving up pawns for activity. So that's the main thing to take away from today. Uh, I hope that uh, you guys will keep that in mind and also stay tuned for Nations Cup. We'll do a lot of things together and also uh, subscribe to Chess Base India if you haven't done so and I'll see you tomorrow uh, in the morning. Take care. Bye.